Hi, welcome. My name is Christoph, and with this video, I wanted to introduce you to a new workbook you can use with the web application firewall for Application Gateway. This workbook has been designed to give you better insight in what firewall rules exactly got triggered, what parts on your web application were impacted, and it will help you find example requests to inspect it a little deeper. While all of this can be useful in various circumstances, we found it particularly helpful uh, when tweaking your application or your web application firewall rule set to try and eliminate false positives. And that situation is not uncommon, right? You have a web application, you put a web application firewall in front, and suddenly you see that a particular part or request is not exactly behaving as expected. It could be that there's a web application firewall rule that is blocking what is otherwise entirely valid traffic. So you want to try and eliminate uh, false positives. So when that happens, what do you do? First of all, you need to detect that uh, something is happening and that's something the workbook can help with. And as of then, there's basically two options. You either tweak your web application firewall rule set or you change your application at the source, which is probably the most preferred option if you do have control over the source code. Before we go into details though, I first wanted to show you how to actually go and install this new workbook. So if you go to the GitHub page for Azure Network Security, there is samples and other workbooks uh, out there, but you can navigate to Azure WAF and then there is a folder for the workbook called Application Gateway WAF Triage. You'll find a blue button here called Deploy to Azure. If you press that button, that will take you to your Azure environment. And here uh, you can select the resource group in which you want to deploy this workbook. You can select the region, you give the workbook a name, um, and then most importantly, you give it a full resource ID. And this should be the resource ID of the Log Analytics workspace to which you want to link this workbook. So as soon as you do this and you click uh, Review and uh, Create, you will actually have an, a new workbook inside of your Log Analytics workspace. So I just opened a workspace on my side here. If I go to Workbooks, I'll find a new workbook called Application Gateway WAF Triage. Now, in order for me to explain how you can use this workbook, it might be helpful to look at a small example. So um, I have a web application here. Um, in this case, happens to be an, uh, an SAP web application. And part of this is not exactly behaving as I expect. So if I go to the maintain business partner side of this SAP environment, you'll find that I can go and find business partners, all of that works, but it uh, the, the look and feel looks a bit odd. It looks like there's icons missing of some sort. So it's gonna be interesting to see um, if this is expected, yes or no, and how our workbook can actually help with, uh, with triaging this. Now, let's go to our uh, workbook. Um, but before we do so, um, make sure that your web application uh, firewall, the diagnostic settings, you point the diagnostic settings to a log analytics workspace. That will cause both the access logs as well as the firewall logs to be written to a log analytics workspace. And the workbook is actually making use of that log analytics workspace to draw data from and try and visualize. So um, if I have my log analytics workspace, I can go to workbooks. I find uh, my newly installed workbook here called Application Gateway WAF Triage. And if I open up that workbook, I'm gonna be instructed to select a given subscription, select a given Log Analytics workspace, and then uh, select uh, for how long I want to uh, inspect traffic. So let's inspect the traffic from the last hour in this case. As I do this, my workbook will uh, update and it will show me one or more uh, scopes. So as you might know, a web application firewall policy can be linked to the global scope, which is the entire application gateway, or it could, could be linked to a scope that is a little smaller, like for example, a single listener. So in this case, I'm gonna inspect the global scope. And as I select the global scope, I get an overview of all the different firewall rules that already got triggered in the past hour. And those are ordered by the number of times though those got triggered, which means the top offenders are on the top and the least offenders are on the bottom already should give you a good idea of where the majority of my false positives or my problems uh, are, especially if you just install the web application firewall policy and you know and, and you can trust that all the traffic you've been seeing is valid traffic, 
anything that would show up here potentially hints at a false positive. So that in that sense, the workbook can really help you indicate uh, where your false positives might be. It shows you which rules got violated and which rules you then need to work on, either by changing your source code for the application to be more compliant uh, with the detection capabilities for Application Gateway, or by tweaking the uh, web application firewall rule set. For each of those rules, um, there is also it's not, not only the, the version um, and, and some details here, uh, it also shows you the URL where I can find more details on a particular rule. So let's just um, select the third, third rule here. If I click on that link, it opens up a location in GitHub, which in a lot of cases can tell me more about what this rule is trying to do. In this case, this is a rule that tries to restrict the content types we're uh, accepting. So it looks like there is a particular content type that is not really being uh, accepted here. Now, I don't think it's required for you to understand uh, exactly how those rules are being altered. So usually there is a regular expression and that regular expression tries to detect a, uh, along a given uh, attack vector. Uh, most importantly though, if you just read the descriptions that are on top of the rules, that should give you a good idea of what the rule is trying to do. And just to give you a very simple example, if the, if the rule says um, this is trying to detect uh, some form of, of a SQL injection attack and there's no database anywhere in your um, application, then that might be an indication it's safe to disable this rule, right? So that's the, uh, the, the link to the core rule set GitHub uh, project. Now, beyond just this link, if I select this particular rule, it will go and find all of the hosts that are affected uh, by, this, by the, this rule being triggered. If I choose my host, then it will show me uh, all of the different URLs which were affected on that host by this particular rule. In this case, you can see that there is a couple of SVG files that um, the browser was trying to request and that were blocked probably blocked by the firewall. So let's actually um, select one of those. Uh, so let's select one of those uh, GET requests. And what the workbook then will do is it, it will find a couple of examples whereby the browser tried to actually go to this part and there was an issue with this rule being triggered. Um, if for any of those transaction IDs, I want to have more information, I can try and find that transaction ID in the access log. So the query will build up automatically and I can see uh, immediately in the access log what exactly happened and what was, for example, the return status um, returned from application gateway or what was the return status on the backend itself. Um, same thing for the firewall log. So I can try and find those entries directly in the firewall log for this particular transaction ID. So here we are. And in this particular case, this particular transaction ID just triggered rule 920420. Request content type is not allowed by policy. Okay. And again, I have that very same link that will take me to GitHub and, uh, and explain. But this also means that now I can better judge if, if this is something that is a problem for my application, yes or no, and I can start tweaking my rules. In my case, um, SVG is not something that is uh, allowed uh, by default uh, by, the, by this particular rule. So I can go open up my web application firewall policy. So I go to my web application firewall policy. I go to my managed rules. And the rule I'm looking for is 9204.20. So 9204. 20, so request content type is not allowed by policy. Um, I know that those SVGs coming from the SAP backend are for me safe. So I will disable that particular rule. I will save my web application firewall policy. And when I return back to my application here, and when I do refresh of this page, then suddenly my icons are properly showing up and I can start working with my application. So we've basically seen how you can use uh, the workbook to triage which rules to tweak, which rules to tweak first, the worst offenders probably, and how you can find false positives. 
There is a similar section in the workbook rather than triaging this by the rule. You can also triage by URL. So if you choose a host name here, then it will give you an overview of all the different paths which were triggered by some firewall rules. So if I was looking specifically for an SVG, I could go and type SVG. It will filter out the different paths that were affected by some rule. I select an example request here. Again, I select one of the transaction IDs and it will tell me all of the different firewall rules that got triggered. Okay. So there's various angles in how to, uh, to work with this. So I hope this was uh, helpful. Good luck with this new workbook.